Hi everyone, this is Arlene. Thank you for joining me for this tutorial series. In part one, I will be showing you how I altered the cover of this 12 by 12 matchbook box using mixed media techniques. First step is priming the box, and I do this with a paintbrush and some gesso. And the reason for priming the box is to make sure you prepare the surface for all of the altering that you're going to be doing. I'll be adding some sheets of wax paper um, inside the box, and this is just to catch some of the drippings of gesso and Mod Podge that I'll be using to do some of the mixed media art on the cover. Here I'm taking some cheesecloth and some Mod Podge, and I'm just putting that down onto the surface to create some texture. Doilies also add some really nice texture to mixed media art projects. You'll see me adding some pieces here. I'll be incorporating some lace for my stash. You want to make sure you put a good coat of Mod Podge over the lace and that'll hold everything together well. Here I'm using my heat tool to dry the Mod Podge. To add some additional texture, I'll be taking some modeling paste, an art spatula, and some stencils. This particular stencil that I'm using can be picked up at your local craft store. It's by Martha Stewart. I'm adding some Mod Podge and I'll be layering down some doilies on the edges of the box. this stencil at Michael's, I'll be adding some random sentiments on the cover of the box using some modeling paste. I wanted to add a wing of this butterfly onto my project and in the end you'll see how the wing really pops from the mixed media background. It's time to add some Graphic 45 metal staples. I have a metal butterfly, ornate door pull and door knob, as well as an ornate metal keyhole. Here I have a sentiment chippy from Imaginarium Designs, and I'm going to accent those with some wings by Tim Holtz. I'm pulling out all of my other metal embellishments from my stash and just randomly pulling out what I think might work on this particular project. I'll be incorporating these tile stickers that I got from Michaels, and I'm going to adhere those down with some glossy accents. random flowers from my stash, some I Am Roses, Prima Recollections. point I'm sort of arranging everything onto the cover so I know exactly where it is I want to adhere things down. To ensure the metal embellishments stay put I use E6000 glue to adhere them down. Sometimes you'll see me use some hot glue in combination with that and the hot glue will make sure that the embellishment stays 
while the E6000 is drying. Glossy accents can also be used as a glue and I've found that over time it does hold the embellishments down really well. Here I'm adding some geometric stickers I got from my local craft store and I'm adhering those down with some glossy accents. Behind the scenes I adhered everything down on this ornate door plate using E6000. At this point, I'm just pulling all the elements together and I'll be adhering all the pieces down. Before covering the entire box with gesso, I decided to do some additional stenciling on the side of the box. This is how the box looked before I coated it with gesso. You'll see the different colors of flowers on here. Once you gesso the entire box and spray it with your stains, the project takes on a whole other look. I poured some gesso into a bowl and I took a small paintbrush and here I'm going over all the elements with a coat of gesso. Make sure you get into all the nooks and crannies. using a heat tool to dry the gesso as I go. I didn't adhere 
down the sentiment with the rest of the elements because I didn't want it to blend into the box. I wanted the color to take on something completely different so it would stand out. Now it's time to start spraying. My sprays of choice are Lindy Stamp Gang Starburst Sprays. I love the bold color and the shimmer two-tone effect. I'm using a combination of pinks, peaches, and greens. Use a heat tool to dry in between colors so the colors don't blend together and create a sludgy look. I'll use a paper towel to blot in between sprays. This way the puddle doesn't settle and create a dark spot on your project. started off with the pinks and peaches and then graduated to the light greens and then I'll start working on the darker greens. You can see the stenciling start to pop out. I really love the stenciling of the butterfly wing. the interior of the box using mostly the pinks and the peaches. Then towards the edge of the box I use mostly the greens. Continue to spray until you achieve the look you're going for. we're done spraying I'm removing the wax paper and I'm going to give you a quick close-up here of what the box looks like after spraying I really love the way it came out it's amazing how all the details just really pop underneath all the gesso and sprays I'm going back to work on my sentiment for the box and I gessoed it as well as the angel wings and now I'm spraying them down with the same sprays that I use on the box. Because these elements were sprayed separately they should pop right out and not blend in with the box so much. I'm using E6000 to adhere the Imaginarium Designs sentiment onto the box. Thank you for joining me for part one of two of this tutorial series. Please join me for part two where I show you how to create the 12 by 12 scrapbook page that will be going inside this mixed media altered shadow box. For more information about this project, visit the Graphic 45 blog at g45papers.typepad.com.